Good morning everyone! It is day 6 of Vlogmas and I'm going to go ahead and open up the goodie bag for today. They're all the same. <laughs> oh, but the tea is love. Oh, I'm excited about this one. I've actually had this one before because we had it at the writing studio. A heartwarming touch of rose, chamomile, and lavender. This sounds like something I would love. And then we've got a repeat of yesterday. So we've got the Kit Kat version of the goodie bag with, of course, the Kinder Treats and the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Hmm. <laughs> six days and they've been all the same and I know there are different things so I must have somehow shuffled them down to the latter half of the month when I um, was arranging the pictures how I wanted them it's a bit of a chilly day today but it's actually not bad in the Sun I have my earmuffs on which means it's incredibly hard to put on my face mask and take it off again. So what I've been doing is just hooking it on one ear under my earmuff and um, then it's much easier to put on if I'm going into stores. If I'm only walking a short distance, I'll usually just leave the mask on, but because the grocery store I went to today was um, quite a ways away, I wanted to be able to breathe and I didn't want there to be a lot of condensation on my mask, so I just take it off in between. I got a whole bunch of buns from the Chinese bakery. I am so excited. We were eating these a ton before the eat at home challenge, and to suddenly stop was a bit of a shock to my system. I did really well at the grocery store today. I only bought one item, the instant green curry sauce that I love. We used our last one, or our only one, during the eat at home challenge. We usually have like one or two of these, but I'm trying to be good with sauces and only keep one backup in case um, I need it one day for like a quick dinner. I was going to buy a few other things. I even had a basket with me, but then I was like, I'm not really needing anything. So I'm trying really hard to limit my grocery store purchases, even though you wouldn't know it yesterday, by my junk food haul. Let me show you what we got. This is kind of the usual haul from the Chinese bakery. So this will be very representative of what we usually get when we go there. The first thing are these Chinese steamed buns. And I showed you how I like to dip these in my coffee. I don't usually do that. I usually just eat them plain. These are glutinous rice balls with peanut filling. It's like a sweet peanut filling that is delicious. They're covered in shredded coconut and they are so so yummy. These are my favorite buns as of late. There are three of them. They are the hot dog bun so it's basically like a regular hot dog baked into a Chinese bun. They are delicious. Hubby and I both like these but these are probably my favorite. These are barbecue pork buns and although I do really like these I've been craving the hot dog buns more so these are probably all going to be for hubby. The barbecue pork buns are my favorite favorite dim sum dish. Not necessarily the baked ones, although I love the baked ones, but I prefer the steamed ones. I actually have a real craving for that. I'm thinking maybe we should get dim sum takeout at some point, perhaps tomorrow. I'm really craving Chinese food, maybe because, um, again, it's comforting. And there's a bit of nostalgia tied up around that. When I'm feeling not great or when I go through a bout of mild food poisoning, I typically like to gravitate to what I know, and what I know is a of course junk food and Chinese food. So I'm really craving Chinese food right about now. The last buns I got are these ones and these are coconut buns so inside there's this really buttery and coconutty sweet filling that is delicious. These aren't my favorite though so I typically don't eat them unless I'm really craving it. They're a little bit too heavy for me because the filling is rather buttery or greasy. Hubby though really loves these, so he'll probably have all of these as well. And that is all I got at the Chinese bakery. Hello. Hey. Hubby and I went to get peppermint mochas, our first of the season. We love peppermint mochas. Here's the drink I got. This is the Grande Peppermint Mocha Decaf Espresso. I did half sweet, so only two pumps of mocha and peppermint syrup. I substituted with oat milk instead of regular milk and no whip. 
I am such a cookie monster. I finished this entire package of orange cream biscuits in two days. Hubby didn't have any of these because he doesn't like orange flavored things. So I ate this all myself. They're very easy to eat. Time for our tea tasting. So this is Paka Love, a heartwarming touch of rose, chamomile, and lavender. On the back it says, I love you. <laughs> Where is she? Cheers. There she is. <laughs> she always wants to know what's going on. It smells really good. Lavender. Mm. That's all I taste is lavender. Yeah. You? I'm not sure what I taste. I think I taste the chamomile. Yeah? Mm. It's an interesting flavor. Nothing really stands out to me that, that much. I have had this before, but I don't really remember it that well. Maybe it wasn't steeped for as long. I did steep this for 15 minutes. The ingredients are chamomile flour, 25%, lime flour, elder flour, marigold flour, licorice root, rose flour, 5%, lavender flour, 5%. It's quite good. Mm -hmm. I can better this with these. <laughs> Paka seems to really like licorice, aniseed, and fennel. I think that ingredient has been in almost all of the teas that we've tried, except maybe the mint one. This one has that too? This one has licorice root. Mm -hmm. I think it's because those ingredients, um, they provide a bit of sweetness. So that's probably why they include it. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't taste sweetness with those things. Yeah. Taste nastiness. Oh, <laughs> this feels like a real vacation, I think, because we're eating so much junk food and takeout. And that's kind of typically what we do. I was looking back at last year's Vlogmas and I started to really miss travel. I haven't really missed travel for over a year. Even when we went to Japan last year, I wasn't really craving going on vacation. We went and we had a great time, but it wasn't like I needed a vacation. And I wouldn't say I need a vacation now, but I just miss travel a little bit. I miss Japan in particular, just thinking back on the food that we ate, all the konbini goodies, all the junk food, and all the really good um, like sushi and ramen. It was just... So nice, so much fun. But this feels kind of like a vacation because we're not really cooking and we're going out a lot for takeaway and we're also eating a lot of junk. We tend to eat a lot of junk food when we're on vacation, <laughs> like chips. We like to try like the local chips. And um, in Japan, we bought a lot of stuff from the konbini, like the buns and the pastries and stuff like that. It's just so, so good. So maybe that's part of why this feels like a real holiday? Does it feel like a vacation to you? Yeah. You have a wood chip. <laughs> it's Hubby's turn to grind the pellets. And he tried to trick me. <laughs> That's twice now he's tried to trick me. And this is only his third time grinding the pellets. He keeps trying to get out of it. 
Um, but yeah, today is an even number day. So I opened the advent calendar, which means he does the grinding of the pellets and I ground the pellets yesterday. I also got the book back from my friend. We've still been passing this back and forth throughout the pandemic. So we'll drop it off at each other's places. And um, this is the last month. So she wrote in it on the odd number months and I'm writing in it in the even number months. It's December, so it's my turn to write in it and I'm eager to see what she wrote. She also included this sweet holiday card. Hello everyone and welcome to Vlogmas Day 7. I am on my way to Chinatown now. I'm gonna see if I can get us some dim sum. This is what we ended up getting for our dim sum feast this morning. I'm so excited. We got two orders of siu mai, an order of the pork spare ribs with black bean sauce, some sticky rice. This is just the plain rice roll with the dipping sauces. We got ta siu bao. These are the steamed barbecue pork buns that I love. And this is that delicious desserty thing that my friend introduced us to. It's got um, salted duck yolk custard inside. Delicious. Hubby and I are so full. We ate all of that dim sum. I thought we might have leftovers, but I guess not. Hubby's gonna open the advent calendar now. Hubby and Lulu are gonna open it. Day seven. <laughs> Nighttime. Night oh, that sounds good. Look. <laughs> oh! A big one. We got a big I one. <laughs> We're so full. We have big chocolate bars. That's only two. Yay! So we've got the Kinder, and then we have these Dairy Milk Oreo bars. These are full-size bars, but only 38 grams. <laughs> and then this tea we will try a little bit later. It has been a few hours and I'm about to try the Dairy Milk Oreo. This is a new chocolate bar. Never seen it before. Hubby's not hungry yet so he's going to wait till later. But it's time for my mid-afternoon. It's four o'clock so it's kind of like my dinner time. I'm gonna have this and then I'm gonna have some Chinese buns and such from yesterday. Just slowly eat a little bit of this and a little bit of that over the next couple of hours and then that'll be it for me for today. I'm still okay from dim sum. I'm certainly not hungry but um, I do like to keep to my feeding window so I'm just gonna have like a few little things. Let's try this bar. This is what it looks like. I'll just break off a piece. Can you see that? Mm. Mm. My jaw cracked. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Mm. Did you hear that? I heard the crack. I didn't know what that was. That was my jaw. <laughs> it rarely does that. I think it used to crack more before I had um, Invisalign. My jaw issues seem to be better um, after I had the Invisalign treatment. This is really good. This um, tastes kind of like a cookies and cream bar inside a dairy milk. There are little bits of um, Oreo cookies. I don't think there's enough cookie inside to taste like an Oreo, but um, it tastes like the Hershey's cookies and cream bar inside a Cadbury dairy milk. So it's really, it's really delicious. It's really sweet. I like it. Never met a chocolate bar I didn't like. time to taste the tea. I am pretty full now. I ate all of the things I was planning to eat. I still have my chocolate. I was saving this for my dessert, even though I kind of had a series of desserts. 
But we're gonna be trying the Pupka Nighttime. This is a dreamy bed of oat flower, lavender, and lime flower. On the back it says, sweet dreams. We're having this pretty early, it's still only 5.15. It smells really good. I'm not sure what it smells like. Cheers. Mm. I steep this for 15 minutes, about 15 minutes. This one's super light in flavor, right? I taste the lavender. I think I taste the lavender too. That's it's really good. This tastes more like lavender to me than yesterday's. Yesterday's tasted more like chamomile to me. But this is good. I find the polka teas are really mild for the most part. Which I like, but hubby usually likes a stronger flavor. Mm -hmm. I like because of the lavender taste. Mm -hmm. So this is oat flowering tops, 30%, licorice root, chamomile flower, lavender flower, 14%, lime flower, 10%, valerian root, and tulsi leaf. Oh, there's tulsi in this. Mm. Tulsi is like, I don't know, they call it holy basil, I think. It's like a, it's like an herbal infusion. We had it before. We had it twice. We had a plain one and then we had the Tulsi Tranquility in the David's Tea Advent calendar last year and it was really good. I even bought it after. It's gone now. Yeah, I really like this. I'm really liking the Pukka Teas. But they are very mild. Maybe with this size of mug, I should put two tea bags inside. Because maybe each one is for eight ounces of hot water. Maybe I should take down the box and have a peek. Okay, we're gonna finish the rest of our tea. Hubby also started his Oreo bar and he really likes it, right? Yeah. He loves cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to my bathroom. We are going to be making some dry shampoo. This is the first time I've tried making my own. It seems pretty easy and I had everything that I needed except for um, these little bottles. I could have put it in like a regular jar or a regular bottle, but I decided to buy these little spice jars from the dollar store because I thought it would be easier to have um, like a way to sprinkle this onto my hair. Sometimes I still use the brush, but I do like to work it in with my fingertips now. I find that gets the powder closer to my scalp, and it also gives me like a nice head massage, and I feel it keeps the oils at bay a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up now, and I'm going to also apply it now because I am on... Hmm, when's the last time I washed my hair? I washed my hair on Saturday night and it's Monday night now. I'm going to try to go another day or two. So I plan to wash my hair again either on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. So we'll see how it goes. I've got my spice jars. I've got the base of my dry shampoo, which is cornstarch. And then I've got my little mix-ins that I'm going to try. I've got some cocoa powder and then I've got my activated charcoal. I was tempted to cut my hair a few days ago, but I've been liking to put it into a sock bun. So I think I'll just leave it at this length for a little while longer. So this has like a nice top where I can sprinkle the dry shampoo onto my hair. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm going to put in roughly one tablespoon of cocoa powder. And then the activated charcoal, I'm going to put in one teaspoon for now. And I'm just going to shake this up. I decided not to use any sort of like scenting agent. I was considering spraying the bottle with a bit of perfume because I still have a lot of perfume and I don't really wear it that much, but I decided not to do that because um, the cocoa will have a scent to it and I wanna try this recipe without having any of that in there just yet. Okay, 
Okay, so I think I'm gonna do some more activated charcoal because the color is still, I mean, it's fine. It's pretty gray. I'll put in one more teaspoon. So there are two teaspoons in here now. And I used to brush my teeth with activated charcoal, which is why I have this stuff. It was supposed to be a way to whiten my teeth, but I don't feel that it really worked, so I stopped using it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this color. It's just like a darker gray. So this here is um, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one tablespoon of cocoa powder, and two teaspoons of um, activated charcoal. Let's put this in the hair. That was a lot. <laughs> I'll spread it out. The other way I like to apply it is putting a bit in the palm of my hand. And then using the brush. But I find sometimes this isn't as effective. I know I did a video on this a long time ago, but it's been years and I've kind of changed the way I like to apply dry shampoo. I do prefer to work it in with my fingers. This is feeling pretty good. It feels really dry. I find it's really the crown of my head and around the ears where I need the dry shampoo. And then the other way I like to do it is just to put some in the palm of my hand and then apply it with my fingertips. This does feel a little bit grittier than the dry shampoo that I've been using, the cake one. texture is a little bit different. There's definitely some like grittiness. It might be from the cocoa powder because I didn't sift it or anything like that. But overall I think this will work really nicely. My hair feels really good. Feels like the grease is at bay. Got a really nice kind of like head massage as well. I don't smell the cocoa powder. No real scent to it at all. I probably didn't use enough cocoa powder, but that's okay. I'm getting ready to settle in for the evening, even though I've been home for over half the day. I've ground up Truffle's pellets and I fed him a good portion of the critical care. Grinding up the pellets, because I recorded it today, I saw that it only takes me about three to four minutes to do that, so that's not too much time at all. I do have to switch hands in between though, because my hands get um, tired or they start hurting a bit, so I'll just switch hands every once in a while, and um, it's relatively easy. I like this way better than the pestle and mortar, mainly because um, I get like a finer grind. So before when I was using the pestle and mortar, I would mix up the ground up pellets with water and critical care, very similar to the recipe that I use now, but it would get stuck in the syringe. So I would often have to stop feeding truffle to clean out the syringe and then feed him again. So this way is much easier because the particles are finer and they don't get stuck. So it's worth the time and the effort. And I also forgot to mention last time that the ground up pellets, it works out to a lot cheaper than the critical care. I do like mixing in the critical care powder itself though because I find that it binds better with water that way. Otherwise, um, the mixture starts to separate because the pellets aren't exactly the same formulation. Not too sure what the difference is, but they don't mix the same in water. Truffle is really enjoying feeding time. He loves it. He gets like really excited and he hops back and forth. He hasn't fallen too much today, which is nice, um, but he was falling a lot. I think it was like yesterday and the day before. His back legs just give out on him very often now. And the other morning he actually fell and he couldn't get up. I heard him trying like a few times, which woke me up and I had to go into his playpen and like help to write him. So um, yeah, he was like 
stuck in a fallen position and he kept like trying to get up because I could hear him scratching to get up but he seems good today he's still very affectionate he's sitting right at my feet right now he likes to rest his head on my ankles so i'm just petting him as i'm talking to you guys but yeah he's really really sweet he'll chase me for the critical care and then when he's had enough he'll just like hop away and he'll just ignore me <laughs> when i come close to him so i know when he's um full and then when he's ready for more he'll like signal me he'll he'll come and he'll not just sleep on me but he'll put his paws on me or he'll like start circling me so he makes it very apparent when he wants food i think i'm going to end off the vlog here thank you all so much for watching i'll see you very soon for day eight of vlogmas and beyond bye